Hi there. In this video, I want to talk about Involution. Involution is published in 11 April 2021, and it said inverting the inherence of convolution for visual recognition. So I have highlighted some parts of the manuscript. Uh, like other videos, we go through the paper and then we have, a, we have an implementation. Uh, there is an implementation. I'm not using this one because it has lots of details and maybe understanding of it is a little tricky. That's why we implement one uh, simpler and cleaner code for PyTorch. Let's see what is Involution first. Uh, they said that convolution has been the core ingredient of modern neural network. In this work, we retain the inherent principles of a standard convolution for vision tasks, especially spatial, agnostic, and channel specific. So this is very important. We will talk about it. They say, we additionally demystify the recent popular self-attention operator and sub subsume it into our involution family as an overcomplicated instantiation. Um, after they uh, explain the involution, they have a comparison, the involution and the attention, and uh, especially self-attention. And they say they, they are somehow similar uh, when we apply the involution. It's uh, very similar that we are applying an attention. So what is this part? A spatial agnostic and channel specific. So suppose we have um, an image with three channels, R, G, and B, and we have a kernel in size three by three. So this is three by three. And this is the image with like width and height. And this is maybe R, G, and B channels, okay? And we have, as I said, three different kernels it's size three by three. So when we are applying the convolution, each of these channels are convolved through each of these kernels. So for R, we will create three different outputs. So we will have, let me show you this way. So for R, we will have three different outputs. For G, we do the same. So we apply the G channel on the first, on the second, and on the third kernel. So we will have three different output for it, and also for the B. So two things happening here. First, um, we have redundant information because sometimes the information that we have in the, for example, R and B channels are very similar and applying the same kernel on them is just creating some redundant information. Um, another thing is that it is not as here it said, spatial agnostic and channel specific. It's not channel specific. Uh, maybe we wanna just apply a kernel on, in, on this channel, different kernel on this channel, another kernel on this channel. And also it's not spatially, uh, spatial agnostic. It means that when we have this kernel, the first kernel, it will be applied on the whole image, but maybe there are some part of the image that needs another kernel. And if we go through the deeper layers of the network, we are, we are losing that information and um, the, the correct kernel cannot be used anymore. If we don't have uh, enough number of kernels at the interface of the network, maybe, maybe we lose some of the information because it is not a special agnostic. So uh, have in mind these two important features, first a special agnostic and channel specific. The involution is uh, offering that. Uh, and let's back to the paper. So they say, locality constrain the receptive field of convolution posing challenge for capturing long range spatial in interaction in a single shot. So as I said, so we have a small kernel, maybe three by three or even bigger that cause the a smoothing effect. So we cannot have long range spatial interaction. Maybe this part of the image should be connected to this part, but because of the uh, one kernel that we are using, we cannot use that information. On the, on the other hand, as it's known, inter-channel redundancy inside convolution filters stands out in many successful deep neural networks. So 
uh, we have lots of interchannel redundancy as I showed you. They said that involution could summarize the context in the wider spatial range, thus overcome difficulty of modeling long range interaction. So they solved that long range interaction. We talked about another, another paper, DAU, and other paper, WaveNet, in the previous videos, that they also tried to support the long range interaction, have a, long, a larger receptive field. Involution could adaptively allocate the weight over different positions so as to prioritize the most informative visual elements in the spatial domain. So in involution, instead of having one kernel sliding over the whole image, for each position, we will have a different kernel. So that gives us better control and more power when we want to apply a convolution. So um, the first talk about the convolution, how it is formulated, just see this formulation that we have convolution kernel here, and then it, they go to the design of the involution. So in the design of the involution, if you compare this formulation, we are creating a kernel, but this is called H, and we multiply it by the input. But how this H is created? The H is created by another function phi, and the phi is also created this way. So we have weight multiplication, and another, uh, this is a batch normalization, this sigma. They said imply batch normalization. And we have another weight multiplication. So weight multiplication can be considered as a convolution with kernel size one by one. So we can implement it by uh, kernel size one by one. And, and the W0, which is the first multiplication, the output channel is C, the number of channels divided by R, and the input channel is the number of channels. So what, what does that mean? So we have this matrix K is a kernel size, like K by K number of channels. So we multiply it to um, W0, and W0 is trying to uh, use some intra-channels information. So that's why we use C divided by R, a ratio. Uh, as an output. So it means that we want to somehow reduce this size to use some of the information, to intermingle some of the information between the channels. And after that, we have k by k by g, which is here, k by k by g, and g is just one here. So uh, it means that we want to create a kernel in, in size of uh, k by k by how many number of channels that we want. So we are just somehow uh, combining information between different channels. And we, we have created this kernel. So this kernel will be multiplied by the uh, input. So you can see that we have uh, the size of the kernel is fixed based on the batch size, how many channels we did have, the k by k and h and w of the images. And after that, we multiply it with the input. So we have the kernel and we have that unfolded part of the image. We multiply them and we have average pooling and replace the i and j pixel in all channels with the new information. So you can see in the comparison, they are comparing with the ResNet with some attentions mechanism and they call their method RedNet. And you can see the RedNet is getting very good accuracy with lower number of parameters because we, we reduce the redundancy a lot. So that's the uh, overview of the paper. So let's jump to the code and implement the involution. So I have implemented the code uh, in order to reduce the size of the video. So we can go through each line and see what's happening here. So we have created involution.py uh, as other videos we inherited from NN module. And what we need is the number of input channel, number of output channel, the kernel size, the stride groups, reduce ratio that we have, dilation, padding, and bias. So we put them in the parameters of the class and we need to do some, some things. First is initial mapping. So um, we suppose, uh, let, let's back to the paper, um, what we're supposing here is that if we have number of C in the channels, we will get number of C in the channels. 
So it is like one by one uh, transformation. So if you want to have different output channels, it's good to first um, have a different inputs, like multiply the input to the, um, like using a matrix multiplication or maybe a one by one convolution, change the number of channels first, then apply the, we have created uh, init mapping, that init mapping is getting the input channel, number of output channel, kernel size, everything is one. And we only, we only apply it if we know that number of input channel, output channels is not equal. If they are equal, we can apply identity matrix because we don't want to change the input. But if it is not, we want to change the input channel. The reason that we are doing that is just for um, unfolding the inputs when we want to multiply the, we want to multiply this kernel to the input. We are not changing the input when we want to calculate the kernel. We are using again the uh, C channels that we have, but when we want to multiply the calculated kernel by the input, we do the initial mapping to be sure that the size is based on the size that we want. The next thing that we need is the reduce mapping. If you go back to the paper, you see that it's called reduce and C, C divided by R, and we have a spanning also, which is C divided by R, K and K and G. So we are exactly uh, doing the same. So we have reduce, number of input, output uh, divided by reduce. And uh, this double slash means that we wanna have integer division. And everything is same. Kernel size is one, asteroid is one, and yeah. For span mapping, as uh, I showed in the paper, it's same again. So we have number of output channel divided by the reduce ratio, the kernel size multiplied, multiplied by the number of groups, and everything is same. Okay, so we have covered up to this part. Then we have unfolding. The unfolding get the a number of kernels, uh, sorry, the kernel size, the dilation, and padding, and the S, which is the S, right? So in feedback, I have unfolding here. So we have the kernel size, dilation, padding, S, right, coming from the class. And we have the sigma. Sigma is here in the paper. And they mentioned the sigma is the batch normalization, as I showed you in the description of the paper. I also added the ReLU because um, besides batch normalization, we want to apply the activation function. So we have that sigma too. So what we want to do is simply, we will get the input uh, with batch size, number of channel, input height, and input width. And based on the asteroid padding, dilation, stuff like that, we calculate the output height and width because uh, when we want to calculate the kernel, we need, we, we need to be sure that the kernel, total kernel size finally would be the same as the output width and output high. That's why we apply the first uh, average pooling uh, to the output width and output height to the input. And also um, we do the, that initial mapping and unfold the input and we have unfolded input. For unfolded input, we change the size to be the batch size, number of group, number of output divided by the group, the kernel size by the kernel size, and out and bit. Why we are doing that? When we apply the unfold function, which is, is, is inside the torch, we get input in size n by c, number of batch, number of channel, and others. And we will return n by c uh, by kernel size by kernel size in L. What is important is after getting this, we have C multiplied by kernel size by kernel size. But here, after applying that view, reshaping that output, we are separating that groups, the outputs and the kernel size by kernel size and the others, okay? So why, why we need that? Because these unfolded input will be multiplied by the kernel. And the kernel is calculated by this way. So first we have applied the uh, W0 and we have applied the sigma function, applied the W1, and then applied the, applied the moving 
uh, apply the average pooling and we get the kernel. And when we get the kernel, so we need to change this kernel size to be equal to the size of the unfolded input because we want to do the matrix multiplication. For doing that, we need to say it should be the batch size, the group, kernel size by the kernel size, and uh, image height and image width, which is the kernel height and kernel width. And we do, we add a one for, for this part because we don't have it. We suppose that each time each kernel is just one. If you see the, if you see this H, uh, it is K by K by group, yeah? So we are, we are doing that here. We are getting a kernel and the size is kernel by kernel by group. And we don't have this part. That's why we just unsqueeze and put a one there. So when we want to multiply, we don't have any error. So finally, we get the output, reshape it, and return it. That's it. Uh, I have created also a, a notebook. I open it in Visual Studio Code. And this is very similar to what we did for DAU. So I do not uh, cover it. You can see that video. So we will load the functions, we load the, uh, we load the imports functions that we need, we load the data set, CFAR10, and we have this network. In instead of DAU, now we just added the involution. And at first we have more spatial resolution. And during the time we are intermingling more information from different channels. Um, after applying some involution, we will uh, have some linear layers and we get the classification function. So we have optimizer, the Adam, and this is a summary of the model just for showing the number of parameters is very low comparing to what we have in like a convolution. Finally, we have a training loops. I didn't let it run for 100, but you can see it started from 2.4. It's It was decreasing, I stopped it. Just to see the accuracy, I got 45% accuracy. The accuracy of CFR10, if we let it run, is like about 54, stuff like that benchmarks, I guess. So we are in a good position, even if we started after five iteration. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video and please share with your friends, subscribe and leave a comment. Appreciate, have fun.